Good afternoon, everybody. It's Stephen Paul from WinExtra bringing you your daily brief of Microsoft news and information for March 29th, 2011. And before, before we start, I just want to verify something here, okay? Today, TELUS is supposed to be pumping out the Nodo update. Mm hmm No, not yet. All right, well, it's early in the day yet. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So basically what you're saying is, there goes my bloody video again. Basically what you're saying is that you're complaining because you haven't gotten pumped by TELUS yet. Exactly. Hudson needs a good pumping. <laughs> Any lonely women out there, the number is 2518280. Voice messages. <laughs> <laughs> or send in a video email of podcast from linextra.com. Uh, see, that's what you get. That's what you get that's for, for being get. a smartass. My and video was yeah. I'm not sure whether or not it's my video or whether or not it's the connection between you and me here in Canada. Are you in Canada and me here? But um, we'll deal with it. Something is going crappy. Then you might just have to put up with my video changing. Yeah, put up with it, folks. You're used to it from us. Anyway, um. Speaking of putting up, apparently Microsoft is beginning putting out. You know, <laughs> is begun distributing Microsoft Windows 8 to OEMs via their Connect channel. Yeah, really. This well, is about, you know it's about time that they started to do this because if they want OEMs yeah. to be on board and they want to make sure that you know driver support is there and all that sort of stuff this is the time to open it up well before the debate is so it looks like we're kind of on track for maybe a September beta it sure looks that way and kind of in line with the possibility of a Windows 8 tablet this year you know because I don't know no, no you see Here's the thing. We're only talking about seeing a beta in in um, in September. It's possible, I suppose, that some OEM could come out with a come out with a a build a tablet based off a build, but that wouldn't be that wouldn't be reliable. I wouldn't be counting on that, you know. No, I, I, I I'm, I'm, I'm stretching. Not saying, based on the information that OEMs are getting the access now, well before the beta. I'm going to say it's going to be first quarter 2012. Yeah. At least. It'd be nice if they could hit the Christmas rush, though. Not going to happen. No. No. Um, I think, though, it's been pumped out as Windows 8 and Server V Next pre release program. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, you can download it from the Connect, but you need a special key. Yeah. yeah. Folks, email the keys to uh, yeah. <laughs> podcast at winextra.com. <laughs> Let us play. I've got, and we swear we won't say who gave it to us. That's right. We wouldn't mind getting some inside information for a change. Um, Hotmail's pumping up the action. They're getting something called Active Views. I the word pumping on the brain. I, I don't know. Pumping is on the brain. What can I say? Um, so the additional Active Views capability. Apparently, I guess it's. it's you know what it is? It's just an advanced HTML email, as far as I'm concerned. Really? Hey. Okay. Um. Seriously, I I haven't actually tried it. I haven't either. So but why are we talking about it? Because we can, about, we can talk about it tomorrow when we tried it. Are you gonna try it? Dude, it only takes two minutes to log in. Yeah, but who uses Hotmail? <laughs> millions and millions and millions of people we're just not some of see them. here's the problem Microsoft has a real brand issue with hotmail because basically hotmail has become the nom de plume of junk mail spammers and everything bad about email yeah but if you actually look at the features that hotmail oh yeah has, no it's 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 ahead it's on par with if not ahead of Gmail it is it's, it's just not cool. Yeah. And, and yet you look at like um right, you have to have a Windows Live slash yeah. Hotmail account in order to use say MSN Messenger. Or do you or do you use or Windows use Live Messenger, whatever it's called these days. And also to be able to you have to use it to log into your, your uh Windows Phone seven. 
Yeah, and yet wasn't that like the number two app being used on Facebook? Yep. And, you know, we know that there's like 350 million or 500 million users of that. And I'm, so right there all obviously have Hotmail accounts. But it doesn't necessarily mean that they use their Hotmail. Exactly. You know. I mean, I have two Hotmail accounts. So okay. do I. Um, one is Windows Live, one is an actual Hotmail. Yeah. But my actual Hotmail forwards to my Windows Live, and my Windows Live is picked up by something else by a pop. I yeah. don't actually go in there all that much. No, I don't either. I very rarely actually log into Hotmail. I have it coming into Windows Live Mail on the desktop, but I... Windows Live Mail. Why are you win using Windows Live Mail? I know that you because have... Because Outlook's a pain in the ass. Full and legal copy of it. I know that. I know it's legal because it was paid for with my credit card. Yeah, and I paid you for it. I know you did. I know you did. I'm not. I'm not trying to imply at all that I <laughs> bought it for you. I'm just saying that I know you have it. But you're using it, sir. Uh, sorry about that one, folks. Vibrinner decided to take a dump on us, so we're we're bad. Anyway, um, IDC. You're going to blame Vodburner. Oh, of course. It's not my fault. Okay. Anyway, this one made me laugh this morning. I mean, seriously made me laugh. But IDC is predicting that Windows Phone will beat RIM and Apple by 2015 to become number two. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of naysayers out there who are saying, <laughs> no, no way. Now, they are saying that's because of the deal with Nokia that this is going to happen. Now... I could, I would like to say yes, but we're only what three years, of, well, four years out from that. And I'm sorry, like we're not going to see any serious Nokia contribution to the Windows Phone Seven world until 2012. So How that's long does three take years. Android to build market share. How long? What? Did it take Android to build market share? Three years. I, I just. Look, Android is already surpassing Apple left, right, and center. Apple's market share is dropping in the overall scale of things, scheme of things, because they're losing out to Android. Yeah. Okay. I, I... Apple doesn't even look like. Look, Apple is supposed to launch. Uh, everybody's talking about Apple going to launch an iPhone five when this conference is coming up. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Apple haven't been buying the parts, there's problems with iOS 5, and and quite frankly, what more can Apple add to a phone um, in their hyper-lockdown environment, kind of feature-wise, you know, maybe they can give it a better camera or something, y you know what I mean? They've kind of come to that that part of the Plateau. Software, yeah, where it's going to be hard to innovate further, uh, okay, we can make it thinner, or we can make it lighter, or we can make it transparent. You know, the, only thing, the only thing but they really they're could do... using market share to Android, and Android is going to continue to grow and grow and grow and grow like a weed. Um, and with the Windows Phone 7 platform being as open as it is, it offers a viable alternative to Android, because it's basically the same model in a lot of senses. But, but... There's a lot of ground to be covered in the next four years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of things can happen, and there's a lot of unknowns. Yeah. And unless Microsoft nips this carrier shite in the bud, <coughs> it ain't going to happen. Oh, yeah. No. But then again, here's one way I could be wrong in that respect, too. Microsoft, uh, sorry, Android, has that same fragmentation yeah. problem. Yeah. And it's still ruling the roost. Yeah. Because you can't be, from an end numbers. user perspective... Um, the variety in the numbers. You can't be freedom. Yeah. And it is. It's the variety, right? Yeah. Apple has one handset. Yeah. You know that no matter what carrier you go on with that handset, you're yeah. going to be paying massive charges. Yeah. Okay? You, you can get Android phones for, so that you're paying from the top of the line in terms of uh, data, plans, and bills right down to, you know, the bottom and cheap. Yeah. It's going the same with Windows Phone, especially with Nokia bringing it into yeah. the entry-level market. 
but we're not going to see that for another year or two. No. But if you actually put all those factors together, this is not beyond the realms of a possibility. Yeah, possibly. You know? No, I'm not. I'm. Let's clarify here. I'm not saying that by this being not beyond the realms of possibility that it is going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Wave the Windows Phone Seven flag. But I'm just saying. Eh. If it does happen, I'd be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. That I'd be willing to turn around to a few people and go, "Told you so." Yeah. Told you it happen. Yeah. I, I I'm never going to dismiss that if can't happen. Yeah. Like so many tech pundits out there are. Yeah. You know? um, and of course, so many of these tech pundits. Very funny thing. So many of these tech pundits are are quoting um, Sarah Fryer, who used to be. With was it Goldman Sachs or was she with somewhere else? Who came out with a couple of famous sort of Windows Phone Seven belittling posts and knocking down Microsoft yeah. stock? Um, ask yourself, folks, why she's no longer with them? Yeah. Uh, now, if you are uh, into the Windows Phone Seven and you're a developer, uh, Microsoft's got a conference or a next big challenge for you. Uh, it's a Windows Phone 7 app challenge for WPC 2011. Uh, you can participate by developing an application, evaluate and score applications, or both, and you can win stuff. Hudson, you are st such a git. <laughs> Just because you can't enter, you make this sound like the most... Actually, I think you can enter, but you make it sound like the most boring thing in the world for everybody else. <laughs> right? First off, you don't have to be in a developer, folks, okay? You just have to get involved with the developer programming. Or with the developer program, you can evaluate apps, you can score apps, that kind of stuff, okay? You can then win a trip to uh, the Windows uh, Partner Conference in LA on June 2011. Just fairly cool, and something I wouldn't mind having myself. Just because Hodgson is an anally retained <laughs> stick in the mud, who, you know, it, it couldn't excite him even if there was hair on it in a wet spot that he could pump. Uh, you came up with this next story, uh, which is kind of. I like that. Just like move away from the insult. Yeah, Just yeah, go yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> which I find rather interesting. The, apparently, the guys at IE. Um, did uh, um, a, um, a post up about power consumption for IE9, comparing yeah, it against the other browsers. They was, basically, what they did was this. They decided, okay, battery life is the most important thing to you know our mobile devices, our laptops and stuff. So how do we figure out which browser impacts your battery life the yeah. most? So they basically stripped down a machine, a 56-watt battery in it, and set it up so that they could first off see how much power it was using doing absolutely nothing mm -hmm. and then they could monitor the power on each and every component on it as as, um, as, as the browsers were put through their paces doing things like you know HTML5 demos or just sitting on the blank page and um, all that sort of stuff you know uh, visiting websites and, uh, and these were all specifically chosen and, and, and uh, it was the exact same tests run on the same machine using each individual browser. Now, yeah. needless to say, rather expectedly, yes. IE9 came out on top. If yes. you're running a Windows machine and you want the absolute best in browser in battery life when you're using your browser, IE9. Because Microsoft obviously have access to the Windows yeah. Core, etc., etc. Um, surprisingly, though, Firefox. Fire or the difference in real world usage scenario is negligible. It is nothing. Yeah. We're talking about like if you have um, what is it a, a, a 56 watt battery, you know, you're only talking a couple of minutes in difference uh, battery life, which is pretty amazing for Firefox guys. Yeah. On the other hand, Stay the hell away from Chrome or Opera if you want your battery life. Whereas <laughs> uh, IE9 clocked in at 3.45 hours or 3 hours 45 minutes. Um, Firefox came in at 3 hours 35 minutes. Chrome came in at 2 hours 56. You know, nearly a full 45, 50 yeah. minutes slower, uh, lower. Yeah. Uh, power use model. Worst of all, though, 
is opera. opera. Opera didn't do well on any of the tests. And this is even considering that opera kind of uh, couldn't even run one or two of the tests that were HTML5 based. So, um, um, now, if you want battery life, buy mine. Yeah. But, but I'll stick with Chrome. I'll yeah. with that. Um, now, before we, we slide out of here with our last story, because it's a video I want to take the show out with, um, if you've got any comments about today's show, drop them into the, the comments on the, on this post or over at uh, Win Extra on YouTube at youtube.com front slash Win Extra. Or, or just say Win Extra on YouTube, dude. I'm sure people know how to find it. Yeah. Or you can drop us a voicemail at 251. 281-8730 only because Paul doesn't want to say it anymore. I don't mind it. I just like watching you myself. Now, this next one which we're going to take the show out with uh, is a Connect Power Ghost in the Shell cyberspace booth, and it's it's cool. Yeah, most sites are posting this as a hack. It's not. Yeah. It's more an actual game. But for yeah. anybody who has seen the anime sci-fi series, um, Japanese companies put this booth into malls so that people can actually... It's like being in the cyberspace uh, of um, of Ghost in the Shell. And this is in celebration of the fact that the anniversary edition is coming out in 3D soon. Oh. So, here we go. And on that note, folks, that's Paul. I'm Steve. This has been WinExtra's Daily Brief for March 29th, 2011. And I'm still no do less. Goodbye. And show title is Hudson Needs to get pumped. <laughs> Thank you.